Hello and welcome! We reach another step closer to completing the SID boombox. Today it's the installation of the SID box circuitry itself. This is the exciting moment I've been waiting for since this whole project started. To start seeing it come together and seeing things working. Don't forget to check out PCBWay if you're looking for custom PCBWay circuit building. I checked out their PCBs and found them to be of excellent quality, and I'm indeed considering them for a future project sometime. And judging by just how surprisingly fast the goodie box with their PCBs got to me, I know they have a class service. So this is the SID box module here, which will fit into the SID boom box here at the front. And this is um, custom made by Wayne. Uh, thanks so much, Wayne. And um, he has uh, put an extra board here where I can make the connections for the buttons and anything else, like the reset button, which is you know here at the back. What I'm going to do now is try and attempt to connect the right buttons onto this. Thankfully, Wayne has included, you know, a little bit of a document to kind of. There you go. Here. So this is mono in for the spectrum analyzer, and you know, here are the pinouts for the reset for this board here, and I decided it'd be best you know, doing a plug here. So rather than soldering the, the the wires directly on the board, if I ever need to take them out or take this apart to like fix something or adjust something, then I can simply just unplug it rather than desolder every freaking wire, which is not fun. <laughs> so I thought, I'm thinking ahead here. So now let's, let's tackle this. And which one's which now that I've finally got this. By the way, I've been debugging this entire thing here. I've been trying I've been fixing it, adding improvements, all sorts. Now, as you've probably seen uh, throughout this assembly video, or these assembly videos, depending on how big this is, is gonna get, there's quite a few things going on here. Um, I'd have shown you, you know, certain circuits which I've put in, added in, certain things I've taken out, certain things I've adjusted, so forth. For this moment, I've used Millipad on the VU faceplate thing, and I've joined them together with Millipad. I'm gonna have to let this, yeah, it's starting to solidify. Uh, I've added an LED for the Dolby indicator here. It's a tricolor LED, a retro style tricolor LED, not an RGB one. So I'm figuring this one here is plus five volts because of the red, it's a big giveaway there. And the ground is just two next to it there. Yeah, where the black is. So I'll put this in first. I found my ground wire. I'm running out of wire. <laughs> I may have to actually use the thick one because I cannot find. Okay, is this long enough? Will this do? Actually, I think that's long enough. And no, I'm not shooting up here. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm adding flux. It looks dodgy, I know. Iman saw this uh, the other day and he was just like, why have you got a syringe with yellow stuff? What are you doing? <laughs> and I was like, no, it's not drugs. I think I love a Sash Brella tablet. I used to have these a lot in childhood and this is from the, um, the live stream which I did, which Wayne and I did with, um, you know, unboxing retro candy, candy we had in childhood. If you wish to watch that stream, uh, it was a little while ago. It's in the description below. Or link in the... <laughs> That's what I hear. <laughs> right, so all of these buttons, including the reset button here at the back, which is this thing here. Which is this, there's a button here, reset. There you go. Now all of these, uh, go to ground. So what I want to do with one leg of them is join it to ground. So this one here goes to the player and tracker switch, as in it switches between the tracker and the player screen. So that, these are custom buttons. This shows that you can mod the sit box however way you like. If you're gonna put it into a project like this. There we go. We've got two left here. We got the chip select. 
which selects between the SID uh, 6581 and 8580. And then we have this one here, which is the file browser window. So I want to like uh, eliminate using the touch screen. Well, I don't want to eliminate it totally, but I want to like reduce the, the use of the touch screen as much as possible because touch screen is actually easier when you have it in your hand here. You know, it's easier to use a touch screen, but when it's on a unit like this, it's a little trickier to use it than it is here. So I'm gonna, I want I want some hardware buttons here instead. I guess I've just connected the power in there. Uh, to the SID box, so as soon as I turn the SID phone box on, the power of it, this should turn on. And it doesn't. Why? Everything's connected. Ah, oh, switch. Break. Yay! Okay, it's switched on. <laughs> oh my god, it seems so good here! Okay, that's... these two are wrong way around. So that's supposed to be the tracker and player screens. This should be the menu. So I need to switch the, swap these two around. That's okay. And I need to swap these two around. Okay. So that's that's supposed to be okay. So these two need to be swapped around. These two need to be swapped around. Fantastic. I know what I'm doing now. Okay. So those two have swapped. Now these two need swapping, these two at the end here. Oh, fantastic, that's right now. Now Wayne said the duck on this thing it's very loud. So what I'm gonna have to do is before connecting it to the sit box itself, which are these wires here, these wires go straight into the switcher here. You can see underneath there. And this is, you know, that switches between the aux and the, uh, when you press it, it's aux. When you unpress it, <laughs> it's um, the uh, sit box. So, anyway. Apparently the DAC is very loud, so what I'm going to have to do is um, put some pots in here, on this board here. Okay, let's just remove this board first. The DAC input comes from this part here, which is where the, the volume wheel and the actual sit box is. This thing here, the volume wheel. Now that's here, now the DAC is these two pins. Okay, so I've connected from the DAC here, two wires, hot glued them so they don't, you know, pull the pads off or anything like this and I've soldered on to of the connected all this now what I'm gonna have to do is yeah set it to that uh, that's not aux set it to speakers which I have connected here uh, the video logic ones here at the back I just used them I just found them in the garage and I just thought okay let's just use them for test purposes so let's turn this on. The sit box should come on at the same time. Yep, fantastic, perfect. But they don't hear anything. Oh yeah, that's because I put these on low. So let's play something. What we have to do now is turn these pots up. Hopefully we should be able to start hearing something. Yes, you can see it there. Oh, that's good, you can control the um... Oh, that is fantastic! <laughs> the best tune would be to... to use, would be to... would be a... a SID in mono mod. So we can, you know, set the... calibrate everything. is too loud. I'm gonna have to set the Dolby a bit lower. I'm 
little bit loud, it's okay. Okay, let's um, test something that I recognize. With Dolby, that is. It's working perfect! <laughs> oh my goodness, I've been waiting for this. Dry joint there. Change the fix. Right, this I just remembered. This, these two wires here, they go to the um, the cassette player, the DIN, the DIN port at the back. You can connect it to a cassette deck, uh, and these, you know, I would need to connect these directly to the deck, so it records whatever from the deck, from the sit box into the cassette cassette deck. Okay, so the next thing that needs to be done here is to attach this counter to one of these. Um, actually, the counter is going to be part of the front case, so I'm going to attach it not to the plug side of things, but to the actual board itself. You know, might as well just attach it to that. So, according to Wayne's papers, it is that's the orange data, okay. So it's the third one in. Oh nice. There you go, counter. Beautiful. A good idea to put cap down tape on this on the back of this counter board just to kind of prevent accidental shorts. Okay, so <clears throat> right now, what I'm gonna do is mount everything onto here as much as I can over here. Uh, this thing first needs to go inside here. I think I can just safely glue this down. Here, yes. I still need to paint this thing, these, the silver here, but I'll do all the cosmetic stuff afterwards. I was thinking of doing it beforehand, but no, I'll do it afterwards and get rid of this darn thing. Okay, so that's mounted there. What I'm gonna do now is try and mount this this thing here, which may be a little tricky. I'm sure if I've got this protruding a bit too much. Hopefully not. What I need to do is just put some hot glue into here so that it fixes the place itself. I'm not just gonna stick this with hot glue, I'm also gonna put some mini putt here so and some there to reinforce. So yeah, it will have both. It's just the hot glue will just keep it in its place, and print uh, anything that's a printout seems to react well with hot glue. Just kind of nice. Be careful here, don't burn my stuff. That is all for today. There will be a couple more assembly videos before the grand finale video, where I demonstrate all the things that Boombox can do. Thanks for your likes, your shares, do leave your thoughts in the comments below, don't forget to check out my other videos and do subscribe for more. For now, I will say adios!
I wish to say a big thank you to all my patrons, especially my top tier patrons. Electronscape, Axel Dominator, Rich Carboot, Aaron Metcalf, Camel Tech, and Chris Sevelinsky.